Hello, everyone. Welcome to Electoral Live. This is episode number three, and today we are going to debunk a myth, a myth perpetrated probably by competitors, but we're going to debunk it. So here we go. <laughs> Now, I am here joined today by Tara Medeiros. She is the training director for Trivantis. And Tara, how are you today? I'm good, Rick. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm so glad you could make it today, especially on short notice. And, yeah, happy um, to be here. <laughs> and we're here to debunk myths today. We're going to set the record straight about a couple of things, aren't we? That's for sure. Now, I've been a longtime user of, of Lectora and, and some other products from, from Trivantis, and you know, I've never encountered this this myth that Lectora is hard, it's difficult, it's complex. We can't figure it out. On honestly, to me, it's one of the easier tools to learn. And uh, there's one big thing that I find different about Lectora. I don't have to spend a lot of time working. In fact, really, literally, no time working around bugs. And that's something you get a lot with many of the other authoring tools. So. Bug-free is not a bad thing because that saves you a lot of development time. You're never having to go, oh, now what do I do? Um, I hit a wall. How do I get around that wall? I really haven't hit that many walls, if, if at all, ever with, with Lectora. Where do you think the myth came from? Well, I think there are a couple different ways we can really look at this. Um, the first thing I'll really share is, is just an analogy that I think is really very fitting to the application and that Lectora is kind of like a Ferrari where you don't always have to drive 100 miles per hour, um, but if you want to, it's really easy to just step on that pedal and fly. And, um, and I think one of the biggest myths or, or perpetrators of the myth is that we always associate Lector with the term powerful because mm. it is a very powerful <coughs> application to mm -hmm. use. And I think for a lot of people that term powerful can become um, a little overwhelming and almost a little scary. And I think the better way to look at the tool is really not to associate it with being powerful, but that it's a very flexible tool. Mm -hmm. Lectora is a tool that's going to grow with you. You're never going to hit that wall where you've done all you can in this tool and that's it. That's all the features that are going to allow you to do, but you can just keep going when you're ready. And, and I think that's such a, a huge, um, it's just a huge proponent of the tool itself is that you can continue creating really in interactive and engaging courses using features that are built right into the product. And if that's your comfort zone, you can stay there. But the minute you want to tweak something or, you know, say, wow, that worked really well, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently this next time, you have that full flexibility. So I think that term powerful is where a lot of this myth really stems from. You know, it's sort of, sort of funny because if you look at PowerPoint, a lot of people who do PowerPoint know nothing about PowerPoint. Uh, right. It's so funny because everybody goes, well, I use PowerPoint. I hate PowerPoint. Well, there's nothing wrong with PowerPoint. It's actually pretty powerful. But at the minute, again, the word power and pointing, most people, when they come talk to us, will say, well, we're, we're PowerPoint experts. They're not. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just sort of interesting. So, yeah, that, that analogy of powerful PowerPoint power immediately throws people into this, I don't have time to learn that. And, and actually, right now, with, with Lectora's new interface over the last couple of years, it's actually easier for anybody who knows PowerPoint, for example, to just get in and pretty much work without having to relearn a lot, mm -hmm. um, because it's, all, it's along the same lines. The, the ribbon menus are fairly straightforward. And I have to admit, I didn't like them at first. Now I'm starting to get used to them and go, you know, that's okay. I like it. It's, so it, it does the job. And once you get familiar with everything is, it's actually pretty easy. Um, that's only because I complain about PowerPoint menus too. I never liked the office uh, ribbon approach. I thought it was okay. Um, and I've talked with John Blackman at, at your place about that saying, I don't mind those hundred little icons you used to have. But <laughs> that, was a, that was some time ago and uh, I'm adapting. Um, <clears throat> well, but, I can tell you, Rick, from a, a training perspective and just 
conducting fundamental training with a group of new users, the ribbon system is by far so much easier yeah. in terms of discoverability, mm -hmm. being able to find what it is you're looking for without maybe knowing what it's called or knowing mm -hmm. where to look. You know, we've we've really designed those ribbons out so it makes sense. You know, go to the insert ribbon if you're looking to add an object to mm -hmm. your course. 90% of the chance it's going to be located there. Um, I can remember training classes years ago and saying, all right, everyone, we're looking for the ad certificate icon. <laughs> And everyone's going real close to the application <laughs> to try to see it because they were just too small. So that's been a big improvement in terms of usability. So those people just didn't have Braille screens. That's really the issue. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm convinced. But uh, but no, the ribbon actually is well designed. It's it's easy to use. It's it's actually at first I thought the way they designed the actions. Well, not before I saw it. When before I saw it, I went uh, ribbon menu actions. Bah. And then I went, oh yeah, it's kind of cool the way they did it. Um, so that's actually pretty easy now for people who had a problem with actions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody does it. No matter what tool people are on, when you, when you talk triggers, actions, uh, advanced actions, whatever they want to call them, people just immediately freeze. It's programming. It's not really programming. <laughs> and, and Lectora from day one has had the easiest actions of anyone. Um, a, a lot of people will think that maybe Articulate Storyline is really easy. I'd say yes, but it's not as easy. Right. In, in many cases. Um, Lector did just a great job. We've done some extremely complex things with actions, and, and people just go, how'd you do that? I go, just a couple of actions. It wasn't even that hard. Right. Um, and that's the beauty of it, the, the ease of use of, of even going to the advanced features uh, were a lot easier. And, and you can start with a basic page turner. If that's all you want, boy, it's real easy to fill up a screen, go next, previous. Navigation in Lectora, I think, is probably the easiest of any tool I've worked with because it's all controlled by the, by the title area, if you want it that way. And if you want to get more advanced, you can actually add actions to your next button to say, oh, I'm on slide so-and-so, do this. Make it a little bit different from what you would normally do. Right. And they can't really do that easily with other tools, especially with that kind of control where you're at the slide level controlling whatever you want from a master level. That's cool. That's just... Well, and I think that whole, those two major concepts that Lectora runs on, the book metaphor concept, <laughs> mm -hmm. how we choose to organize content within a title, and just that whole idea of inheritance. Once, as a new user, you understand those core concepts, everything else falls into place. I, you know, I don't stress that enough in fundamental training where as soon as you understand how powerful inheritance is, but more importantly, how easy it is to take advantage of that, mm -hmm. everything else just falls right into place and just just kind of clicks. You have your aha moment after that. Yeah, a lot of people think that inheritance is something, you know, they think of visual C++ programming. No, no, it's not like that. It's just a lot simpler. You just inherit objects from one major object into minor objects, if you will. So, for example, your title. At the title, you can define your, um, your overall look and feel, your backgrounds. And then you can go to different chapters and either take the background or not inherit it. So, and that's really a checkbox. It's, yep. it's literally that simple. And, but I think the word inheritance coming from programming is probably what scares people, inheritance. You know, or the first thing I used to tell people is, no one died. <laughs> right. Kind of look at me like, what do you mean? It's not that serious. It's not that serious. <clears throat> it's actually pretty good. Everybody survived and no humans were hurt in the process. <laughs> so. Well, and I, th I think you're right in terms of, you know, like that word powerful is always associated with Lectora. And just, just hearing that term inheritance, you're thinking, mm -hmm. okay, wow, this sounds pretty serious. This must be a difficult tool to use. But I can remember even eight years ago when I joined Trivanis, uh, I came on board as a trainer. I was out of the education space, so certainly no programming knowledge um, behind me. And when I sat through training, just like our users do now, we were in intermediate training and the instructor said, all right, well, now we're going to talk to you about variables. And my eyes went, oh my goodness, <laughs> took me back to eighth grade algebra. There was a reason I was an English major, avoiding math <laughs> at all costs. And, and it was, it was for a brief moment, it was a little bit of panic there. Like, wow, I never <laughs> understand this. This is going to be coding. This is going to be really confusing. But once you get into it and you all you see is a variable is just a container of information sure. and, and how powerful and what you can actually extract from your learners with variables, that's what sets this tool, um, sets it apart from all the other ones. Well, one thing also that's real easy with it is, and this is when you come to, this is where almost everybody gets stuck. 
You know, it, it's funny. We've worked in a lot of companies where we do a lot of the development, and then there's other vendors in there too, and then we're the ones who have to help the other vendors deploy it because nobody has a clue how to deploy to an LMS. I just shake my head and go, it's not that hard. But there's like this mental block. No, it's an LMS. It's going to be really hard. Yeah, it's going to okay. be really technical, and, 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 and communicate and really, is going to be a problem. Yeah, and Lectora is one of the few tools that we can go in and modify any course management variable we want. If you, cause, and we have had to do that sometimes because of LMS issues or latency issues. And you can get in there and literally change anything without having to know a lot, So, which is one of the beauties, too. You don't need to know the whole API for, um, for let's say, an LMS. All you need to know is the variables... Uh, whether it's complete, whether it's not complete, you know, things like that, your status, and you do a couple of changes if you have to, and boy, you're done. And, um, and a lot of people are afraid to go into the published side of it because it's different. It's not, mm, this isn't good. What do you find the hardest for people when you do teaching or when you've developed training? What do people have the hardest time with, with Lectora? I, I think from an absolute new user, we're talking first day launching the application and going through it, day one of training. I think one of the, the biggest hurdles is um, just familiarizing themselves with that title explorer. And, you know, I can't stress enough that the way that title explorer, it, it's everything in your project, you know, and, yep. and keeping it organized. Um, when you're done developing a page, you're moving on to the next, collapse it down, keep it nice and clean, because that can be overwhelming the more you add to your title, mm -hmm. text blocks, um, media, video files, images, etc. That title explorer is really becoming pretty expansive. And if you can stay on top of it and just keep it organized, rename your object so you do one glance over there and you know, okay, that's my welcome text or that's my um, my bicycle image, et cetera, et cetera. That really does help. Um, the other thing I would say, just in terms of a new user kind of becoming more familiar with the interface is they get a little confused sometimes when they click on an object where they might be looking at a page, they see objects that are on that particular page, but maybe they click on a border image that's technically sitting at the title level in their mm -hmm. title explorer. It's being <coughs> inherited down. And then they can't understand why if they have that object selected and they look in their title explorer, it's now at that title level. So if they were to add a text block, it would fall at that title level instead right. of on the page that they're physically seeing. So yeah. I think that's a bit of a hurdle in terms of just getting comfortable with what it means when you select objects. And, and that's not that hard. I mean, really, what you're saying, if that's as hard as it gets, that's not that bad. They can get over that pretty quickly. Right. Because um, it is sort of like PowerPoint that way. If you think of, of a master slide, you, master slides have a lot of content or can have a lot of content mm -hmm. and then you can modify it and and a lot of people even in PowerPoint get confused as to when they're in a master slide versus what's actually on the page once you get the hang of that PowerPoint just becomes very powerful and, right. and, and same with Lectora that's what we found and boy did you make a really good point name your objects uh, I, I, we have literally, literally gone in and maintained other people's code where every object was untitled 183, I think. And it's like, oh my gosh, what's what? And then try to figure out what it is. It's a little tricky. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's doable, but that also ups the cost of maintenance. But, um, yeah, when you go in, just rename things. And one of the best advice we can ever give people is at your chapter level, name it, you know, whatever that lesson is or whatever else. And then at the page level, n name it after the storyboard page. So you always right. can track back to what you're doing. And if you insert slides or delete slides, add an A or a B or something to it. So you don't have to change your original name. You just add something to it so it'll be in between that. Right. And it's real easy to, to modify at that point. And you guys have added the, uh, the thumbnail view. So it's, it's always, if in the old days, it was much more, um, I guess, uh, textual. To look mm -hmm. at and now with the with the thumbnail view it's a really quick view of exactly where you need to go right so. and to your point when you're talking about storyboarding that's another big tip too the more you can organize and prepare before you even get into lectora mm -hmm. the m much quicker your development <laughs> is going to go i mean so much can be done before you even get into the tool your storyboarding is set up your media your files are ready to go mm -hmm. you've organized renamed when you pull it into lectora i mean that's the easy part so the hard right. part is designing your concepts sure so. sure yeah we even make our, our graphic artists name things according to the pages they're going on so if we have a page name of something like 
uh, LL1, PL1, lesson one, page one, maybe sequence A. The graphic for sequence A is going to be called LL1, PL1, A yep. dot PNG yep. or something like that. So we always right. rename everything. So it's, you, you don't have to wonder. Right. No yeah, guessing. We, hey, there's no guessing. And, and the other thing, Electorate makes this easy too, is we do things in passes. So our first pass is put the text on. And there's ways that we won't talk about it here, but there's ways you can actually automate the insertion of text, which is pretty easy. Mm -hmm. It requires a little bit of programming, but that's that's something that you can do or you can't do in most tools. Right. Uh, but then let's say we do a first pass, add text. Second pass, um, add graphics. Third pass, we'll add the VO, because now at this point, the voiceover, we're starting to time it to objects. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do all of our interactions and everything more complex at the end of it all. But by then, in, in the... in really not that many hours we've got everything laid out and then it takes a short time just to go in and fix it and you know realign re-put things uh, there's one feature i really love in, in the new lectora and i've been playing with that and i hadn't used it before recently i started playing with it and that's the the draggable margins the fact that you've got the um the ruler yep and and the drag it's just like photoshop you just drag down bring it out, and now everything is exactly where you need it to be, and you've got the um, automatic click to the to the right spot. You know, That's just so cool. Um, I can't tell you how excited I was with that new upgrade to the guides, because guides. previous versions of Lectora was like, all right, I pulled this guide out there. I can align my objects to it, but how do I move it? It's right. here. It's stuck there. How do I get rid of it? Right. Um, so much easier, much more intuitive. Now you can just drag the handle over and reposition it very quickly. Yeah, and it's cool because it's so easy to figure out where you are. And if you have to load a lot of objects or you're creating a template, yeah. um, it's just easy to just align everything. You know exactly what your coordinates are. Boom. Stick to it, and life is good. Um, so those are those are real features that, that we enjoy greatly. And, and, and you're right, the guides now are just very useful. Very useful. I mean, there's, you know, the guides are a great tool in order to keep consistency among your design. That's really important when you're creating your content. We've got a ton of tools built right into the application. Uh, textiles, for example, I love the textiles mm -hmm. in Lectora. Create them, save them, use them in a future project, export them to a colleague. Um, it, and it just creates a really easy way to say, hey, I don't want to edit all the text blocks in this course. <coughs> mm -hmm. Let's just apply a style and be done with it really quickly. Yeah, and for those who don't know, textiles are like CSS in web development so it's like a cascading style sheet of sorts of sorts because once you define a style you can apply it anywhere and and I noticed and, and you have that replace all feature so if you, if you want to change all the text in in one particular um, course you can and that's nice that's a real big time saver Especially if you do a lot of copying and pasting from Word documents, you know, you've mm -hmm. got all of your documentation's been finalized, <laughs> this is what you're going to use for your content, you paste it from a Word document that was Times New Roman 12 font, you paste it into Lectora, you want to change it all right away, very easy to apply. Now, there's one question I had, and since you are the training person, you are the master here. Oh, putting me on the spot. <laughs> no, it's a simple one. It's, it's just one I haven't really played with before. Partly because we never used to use the, the lectoral objects that much, the shapes. We just, we did use some, but we usually just used to bring things in. But now the shapes have gotten a lot better in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But you can't put text in a shape automatically. How do you format that text? I haven't figured out how to do that yet. I've only <laughs> played with it a little bit. I'm going, okay, I'm missing something. Yeah, the text formatting can be... Um a little tricky in the sense that you have a couple different places along your ribbons where you can format text, right? So right. Mm -hmm. if I add a text block and I double click into that text block, it automatically shows me the home ribbon, which has my text editing options. But when you add a shape, um, if you double click into that that shape, you can add your text and you'll see the option to uh, format that text on one of the, the style ribbons that now is included when you add that oh, shape. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I was probably looking in the wrong place. I didn't look at style. Yeah, you probably went to the home ribbon where you would go to. Find I did. I did. Text. Nothing's happening. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, we can do really complex things. The easy ones uh, sometimes it's just. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so that that's about the only thing I've had a problem with. So I'm going. I feel uh, kind of stupid asking you, but you know, this is just a simple one. Why am I not getting it? <laughs> um, but. No, that's, that's really true. Um, we have used Lectora in some of the most complex projects we've done, especially ones that required really complex navigations, um, areas that, uh, that just 
required lots of jumping where you had to jump to different so what we would do is and this is what i thought was just great is when you set up your chapters uh, you know like articulate has scenes or 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 things like that captivate doesn't really have anything like that um in this case you can set up your chapters to be kind of think of it as uh, just a jump to place you can jump to a chapter you can even that chapter itself can be in a window separate from something else or you could have it in just a different format completely and then when you're done jump back and you're still where you left off and it's extremely easy to navigate and and I have never, ever, not even once, encountered one bug in navigation where it just works. Backward, forward, jumping, returning. It's clean. It's, that's one of my absolute favorite features because whenever you try to do anything really interactive, you wind up having to jump a lot. And it just does it beautifully. Yeah, navigation is really strong in Lectora. Uh, you can create a lot of conditional branching scenarios very, very easily. And, you know, when we talk about actions, actions are really simple and they can be so powerful because we have conditional actions. And mm -hmm. you can say, you know, go to this chapter if the learner has met these objectives <coughs> right. or completed these activities. And and that, again, just, just gives you so much flexibility. You can create a project, um, linear navigation, page one, two to three, et cetera, but you don't have to. And that's where I think Lectora can be intimidating to people. There's so many features, but they're options. You don't always have to, to do the most complex. Yeah, one thing we use Lectora for a lot also is as a container. Mm -hmm. Because if we need to do captivate files, but we really want to do a lot of soft skills before that, often what we'll do is we'll create a Lectora piece, and then we insert the simulation part of it, small, small parts of it that are simulations. We did one piece for a company, Amgen, which is a large pharmaceutical, and it had a lot of soft skills, tons of it. But in between those lessons, and this is about eight hours of training, uh, there were probably about three hours of, of simulations. And those were all embedded within, and they, they would actually pop up in a separate window as the simulation. You'd hit return, and you're back now. The window's closed, you're back. It was really easy for them. And uh, that, was, that was actually to run their whole... Um, all of the buildings they have, they have, I don't know, probably about 70 buildings. And that electronically ran everything. So we were showing how to use that. And it was pretty, pretty cool program that we had to simulate a lot of graphics and it just worked out great. And that was not that hard to do. Uh, so yeah, we find that on those kind of projects where we've got to bring in content from other places, whether it's mm -hmm. video content, audio is easy. Um, any other kind of content like simulations or, or some other things. In fact, we're working with Branch Track right now, and that brings it right into Lectora easily. So you have your, your scenario based training like that, right Just inside. Like that. Yeah, yeah, right inside of it. And, it. and you can even embed it. So if you want it offline, you can actually import it in. It's offline. Now you have it all in Lectora. You can modify it. And, and the same with the e learning brothers. With the interactions, I was really pleasantly surprised when I brought in some of the eLearning Brother interactions. Mm -hmm. And you can modify everything. That is so cool because once it's embedded into Lectora, you now have all the stuff right on the page. Well, and I think that that does a really nice job of addressing that, that new user perspective of, okay, where do I start? Mm -hmm. You know, that blank canvas panic kind right. of idea <laughs> is how do I get content moving? You know, I'm not, not too familiar with the application. And we've got so many things built in like the eLearning Brothers libraries. You can pull in an interaction. Boom. It's built for you. Mm -hmm. Just modify it. Customize it with your content. You can quickly apply a design theme. So if you don't have graphic designers working on your team or you're wearing all the hats, there's a ton of things built right into the application, which is really nice. And that's sweet because it does save you so much time because on a lot of these when you do input things or import things that's it you're stuck with whatever was designed already you can't modify it right and this was actually very pleasantly surprising i was going this is cool um because now we don't have to spend so much time designing everything they have a lot of pre-built stuff and, and you guys have a lot of stuff also that was that mm -hmm. came in characters and other things avatars um so that's all that's all really nice to use and and we did notice that, as, I think as of Lectora 11, there's a lot more functionality with the transitions. They're working really well right now. And mm -hmm. um, so all of that just adds to it. You can get outside of the boundaries of Lectora now, which is great. Um, that's something we've been wanting for years. And that, I think that showed up what, about a year ago, two years ago? Yep. And one of the things, I mean, our big push for V12 and 
was really just kind of listening to the feedback and knowing that you want everything in one application. You don't want to have to leave Lectora, um, you know, to search for these kind of interactions like the eLearning Brothers were doing. And so now a lot of the things you can do right in the application. If I want to edit a graphic, mm -hmm. I can easily stylize it, drop a shadow on it, crop it, you name it. I don't have to use any external tools. I can save development time, just do it right on the page. And the same goes for, for the stock library and the eLearning Brothers library. It's all just right into the application. Yeah, that's great. Also, there's a, there's a PowerPoint import that a lot of people don't realize Electora can import, import PowerPoint. It does a pretty good job, too. Transitions could be better. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, we're hoping on that one. However, the, every object comes in as, everything comes in as an object, which is really nice because on some of the tools, you get the whole screen, but you can't modify it. Right. With Electora, you can actually modify all the objects, move them around, change timing, do all sorts of stuff, change text because they're all objects on a page, which is pretty cool. Very, very nice the way that was, that was implemented. And uh, short of just more transitions, which I'm sure will come, um, that was, that's my only, I wouldn't even say it's a gripe. I mean, you have enough transitions, it's just I want more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say for my best practice, if you're importing a PowerPoint, I like to leave off the PowerPoint transitions. And if I really want them, I oh, can okay. just apply the page transitions in Lectora. I found that to be a little bit more of a, a smoother transition between that import process. But yeah, that's definitely something we're working on in the future. Well, that's actually good advice. I usually just import everything. I don't even bother. Just See how it works. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's a good idea because on the transitions, you have just much more control if you do it from Lectora because yeah. otherwise... Lectora has to guess what you want on the weird transitions. So that way yeah, you can it just... it kind of remaps it, or at least mm -hmm. it does its best to remap it. So I just start with a clean canvas. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. Um, how did you get into training? Well, this is an interesting story. Um, so certainly I have no programming, computer knowledge um, background. Uh, I went to school for secondary education, English. <laughs> And after college, which I went to in New Jersey where I grew up, I decided I would move to South Florida. I thought, I'll get a teaching job. I'll live by the beach. This is a win-win situation. <laughs> Life does not always work the way we plan it to, so certainly went down there. Couldn't find a job. Long story short, um, a headhunter found me from Cincinnati, where our headquarters are for Trivantis. They knew we were looking for a trainer, and they gave me a call, and that was about eight years ago. I've, I've been in e-learning ever since. Don't regret my decision at all. I love it. I love the company and the product, and I just love being in the e-learning space. So I've really grown to love it very much. Isn't it funny how you, you plan on one thing and it, something totally different shows yeah. up? Yeah, definitely for the better. And so now I live in Massachusetts and work remotely and travel for Trivantis. So I'm all over the place. That's the only part I have to question you about. So you go from Jersey cold to yeah. nice, warm Florida. Now you wind up in colder Massachusetts. Actually, you guys are freezing the last year. This winter, this I year. was regretting that decision. <laughs> it was all, three feet of snow for weeks. Just Oh, everywhere. yeah, I know. I had a friend who lives... Uh, uh, where does she live? It is... She's probably not too far outside of Cambridge. Um, okay. And it, they had almost four feet of snow. It was just horrible. Worcester. Worcester. She lives in Worcester. Oh, okay, she's in Worcester. Worcester, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I use, I, I think I say Worcester, but anyway, she goes, it's Worcester. Yeah, you don't want to know how I pronounce it when I first <laughs> moved here. Everyone was like, don't say that again. Yes, you're not from <laughs> here, are you? Worcester, maybe? Yeah, yeah Worcester, <laughs> that's what I used to say. And they go, it's Worcester. <laughs> okay. Um, but, yeah, that's a lot of snow. That's a, that's a lot of cold. So, anyway, but you guys got through it. We did. We're still here. <laughs> That's pretty good. So what do you see as some of the things that you've been asking for or people have been asking for that will be coming soon or, or things that people want that are in the works? What, what can you tell us that's not NDAable at this point? <laughs> well, I think a lot of the feedback we had been hearing, we were able to address with V12, mm -hmm. which was wanting to stay more features in the product, don't want to leave the application. And so we did a really nice job at pulling those features in. I think we got a pretty big round of applause at the user conference once we had the rotation tool finally in there. Yeah. Um, I think people were asking for that for about 12 years, so that's, <laughs> that was good. Um, certainly what's coming up next for us, as we all know, is responsive course design, and that's what people want. Everything's going mobile, and we want to make sure that we can continue to allow you to create content 
that's going to be accessible from any device. And so we've got a lot of really cool things. And I think you discussed this a little bit with John Blackman mm-hmm. on your last call. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of really cool things coming down the pipes for Lectora and Lectora Online. Yeah, and several people I know saw the responsive demo that you guys, I think it was John who might have shown it. It was. No. And they were blown away. They go, that is so cool. Um, <clears throat> and, and some of these people are very fussy. They're not just, yeah, right, whatever. Yeah, prove it. Show me. And they were just going, this is cool. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. That's that's going to be. A, is that going to be a 13 version or actually before that? Yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not quite sure yet Eventually. how that's going to yeah. go in terms of versioning. So I'll I'll keep my, my lips sealed on that one. <laughs> yep. um, but definitely stay tuned for for some future demos and whatnot. But because we've got a really cool approach and a really different, unique take on it, so I think you'll really like it. That's good. So where do you see e-learning going in the future? And, and, you know, you guys are an e-learning tool, but it's also a web development tool of sorts. You could actually build a whole website on it. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with Lectora that people don't even realize. Um, you can't build websites with it, and, and pretty nice websites at that. Yeah, I mean, we use it internally a lot for that. Um, my training department, I create uh, my shell websites for mm-hmm. anything that we need to access internally. It, it really is just such a great application and, and has so much more uses than just e-learning. Um, in terms of being in that e-learning space, I think, you know, our biggest focus right now is staying on the mobile track. But um, but I think in the future, we should be open to other things and, and just creating web-based content in general because we've been doing that for more than 10 years, which yep. is pretty impressive to say um, in terms of an authoring tool that has that flexibility so now, how much web mobile development are you finding in the real world not just the buzz world but the real world how many customers that you can think of are actually doing mobile development where it's working and they're they're using it we have a we have a pretty good solid um, client base that is currently using mobile um, the U.S. Army is doing a lot of mobile mm-hmm. technologies. They're taking courses on the go. A lot of the organizations that I'll go and do training for aren't quite there yet right. um, because I think it'll take some time. Some of them are still just kind of getting into e-learning <coughs> as it mm-hmm. is now, you know, moving away from that PowerPoint or um, page turner kind of atmosphere. But um, I think it'll take a little bit of time still to kind of to kind of see that really leveling it out, out across the board. But uh, we do have a significant amount of clients that are that are working with it right now, which is great. So you see more and more of it. Yeah, slowly, you know, kind of a snowball effect. Yeah, because at first it was sort of one of those, it was solving a problem nobody had yet. Right. But I think as it's becoming available and easier to do for everybody, it's becoming more of a, hey, maybe we should consider that. You know, the biggest issue for most is security. Uh, that's that's what we hear a lot. We work a lot with banking insurance, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of security issues there. Even though, you know, how many people really care that much about banking training? I mean, they're not going to go there and go, wow, I'm just robbed the whole mess of stuff. you got to right. get through it first without falling asleep, and then right. you'll, you'll be fine. Um, but, but no, I, I have seen some companies doing mobile, and some of it looks really good. Some of it's kind of at, at the beginning stages, and, uh, and you guys were actually one of the first ones, if not the first, who actually had mobile from the get-go because of being HTML-based. Yeah, and I, th- I think that's been a big hurdle, too, for people. You know, I can't tell you how many times people have asked, well, all right, great. I know how to use Lectora. I know how to publish to HTML, upload it to my server, or get it to my learning management system. Mm-hmm. That's all well and good. But but what's this mobile piece? You know, how do I how do I publish for my mobile phones or my mobile devices? And I said, well, it's the same thing. It's just how you design the content. And so I think there's a pretty big misconception in terms of what is needed in order to to create that mobile content. So and once people understand that, hey, it's the same process that that you've been following all this time, I think that's going to be really nice for them when they're ready to, to start creating that. Yeah, a lot of people think that you can take your desktop content without any changes, make it mobile and go, da-da. Right, they want the, the one-click wonder button. Yeah, you know? so you just Where's took a 20-inch <laughs> yeah, so like application on a big monitor, you put it on a phone and go, you don't like two-point font? Right. <laughs> right. You don't like having to scroll and resize uh-huh. constantly as you yeah. move. Yeah. yeah it does that, re- that's a hurdle in itself, just kind it of is. letting people understand design is really important and how you, you know, comprehend information is important based on your device. So you yeah. have to design it a little differently. Yep, yeah, that's true. Well, Tara, we really appreciate you coming on today. I think that was fun. And, um, and where can people get a hold of you? 
Well, this is a great opportunity to announce um, we've just relaunched our brand new Trivanus community site. Um, so if you go out to our website, which is trivanus.com, take a look around there. You'll have direct access to our new community. This is a great space. You can connect with other users. You can connect with myself and other members from the Trivanus team. But you can also upload your content. Anyone who's a member of that community can upload their content, things they've created in Lectora, uh, solutions they want to share with other users which is really great. Um, we're not limiting that to just Trivanus employees who can post content. It's everybody. So we want to really create a, a nice space where users can connect and, and kind of get the answers to the questions that they need. So you can definitely connect with me on there. That sounds great. And are you going to be at any shows coming up soon? Uh, we're headed to, we're definitely going to head out to DevLearn in September. Um, we're still kind of working on some of the other shows that we're going to be heading to later this year. But I know DevLearn is, is a definite on our list for the end of September. Okay, great. Are you guys doing MLearn by any chance? We're not doing not that one. Okay. Yep, not this year. Yeah, that was a small show. That's not, I don't even, I'm not even sure there's a thousand people at that show. Um, it's, I went to one of them a couple of years back and nobody was doing anything. They were all talking about doing something. Right. It, was like, it seems to have been that way the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to wait on MLearn this year and, you know, perhaps maybe pick it back up next year. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, Tara, I really appreciate you coming on today. Um, uh, I've met you in person before at one of the shows. Uh, Tara's, Tara's a good trainer. She's dynamic. And um, definitely you'll enjoy meeting her, especially at the shows. Or uh, you've done some of the um, electoral seminars, too, or the webinars. Yes, yes. Yeah, Most of uh, the Inspiration Wednesday sessions. So yeah. that's that's my voice a lot of the times. So. Those, those are great. Actually, they're very good. I, I enjoy those. Terrific. I never get to see them live, but I look at the recordings, and they're they're really yeah, good. That's what they're there for. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to go live, but I'm usually either stuck doing something else or whatever. And work gets in the way so often. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> Anyway, we're talking. We really appreciate you coming on. Um, and and if people want to get a hold of you, uh, are you on social media too? I think you are. Yeah, absolutely. You can find me on Twitter. Um, I've recently just changed my Twitter name. I think it's Tara Medeiros on there. So <laughs> you can search for me that way and I'll pop right up. So. All right, sounds great. Yeah. So we well, thanks will... so much, Rick. I really appreciate you having me on and just giving the opportunity to kind of debunk this myth a little bit. And, and hopefully that's what we've done. Sounds good. And, and remember, if you're out there and you're considering Lectora, keep considering it. It's a darn good tool. And, and you'll find that you won't be disappointed if you're an existing Lectora user, get better at it. That's what she's here for. So <laughs> I think I went the wrong way that way. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's backwards over here in the studio. So if I, see, you're actually, I keep looking that way, but you're actually this way. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just backwards. <laughs> anyway, well, have a good one, everyone. We will see you next week on Lectora Live, your inside okay. track into Lectora. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye, Tara. Bye.